Well, just, we have just a couple of minutes now to um, just ask you if, if there are any questions or comments from these um, three um, presentations. Yes. The two presentations from um, France and from Poland, uh, neither of them, although they showed us nice pictures of, of rivers, there was no mention of the power that could be gathered from the rivers in both of those areas uh, through run of river hydropower. Why not? Okay, so I, I, we might need our French translator to, um, to translate that question for, um, and the uh, Polish translator. So the question was, um, why isn't there um, hydropower from rivers um, being used in, in France and Poland? There were no examples. Any, any comments back? It was my fault. Oh, they do have it, and it was yes, it was my fault. So you do. So I think, I think I've understood that um, to mean that about 25 kilometres away from Chateau Gontier um, you have that kind of hydro power. Thank you. Any comments from the Polish um, speaker? If I understood it, I was talking about the water pozyskiwaniu odnawialnych źródeł energii, tak? Słyszą pan. W ramce zdroju nie ma spiętrzeń wody, tak żeby można było zamontować jakieś turbiny, które wytwarzałyby prąd. W związku z tym najbliższa ramce, taka elektrownia wodna znajduje się właśnie w dziedzicy w Szorsztynie i z niej jest pozyskiwana, z niej jest pozyskiwana po prostu energia, która jest w tym momencie, w której my między innymi jako użytkownicy rabki korzystamy. Right, so as far as that was understood there, um, it's about using water and not just water for energy and storing energy and obviously creating more, not just using up or trying to see the renewable um, sources. Um, in Rabka's case, it's a bit harder because there isn't actually any supply of water that is enough for a water turbine. The closer one is actually way further away, so it's not feasible to be trying to retrieve it from there, which is why the focus is more on um, solar energy and not water energy. It's just not feasible in that area. That was, that was a very interesting question. So that's, that's it. Yes, that's fine. Yes, thank you. Yes, yeah, so I think everybody's going to really dislike me by the end of today, aren't they? So that's a good, a good place to be. Um, so apparently we have another... Um, German speaker, part of the last presentation, so um, um, which you, you'll um, you're very welcome to to go ahead. Okay, thank you. Do we need a translator? No. Good afternoon, um, everybody. I'm Jacob from Germany, and I trust you're all well and enjoy the conference as much as I do. I will just briefly share with you about our Citizens Energy Cooperative that's been launched in 2011. And I will lose a few words about, the, about some figures of energy cooperatives in Germany, as well as a planned wind farm project that we're working on in Mohart. We've started um, citizen energy activities in 2008 with um, the Solar Areal Mohat. It's been organized in the legal form of a limited partnership and shares were available to hold from around 800 pounds upwards. So it can be seen as a classical investment into, into renewable energy and it was secured through the guaranteed feed-in tariff. Um, this is our latest 
plant with 32 kilowatt and it has sensors in those three trackers that so that they will move with the sun over the day and you probably remember the guy the left hand side he was just on <laughs> deep mount he did all the technical planning for those facilities in the middle there's our current mayor from Mohart. Mohart. And um, you can see that in total we have a bit more than 150 kilowatt, kilowatt peak installed. So that's yeah, less than you, than you guys. So you're not too bad. <laughs> then about four weeks before the nuclear disaster in Japan, we have founded the Energy Cooperative more hard, yeah, I, I just really, I think I hurry up and probably not even mention everything that's written on the slide. Um, we wanted to enable more people to join, so in the cooperative you can become a member from 100 euro upwards, one share 100 euro, which is around 75 pounds, and it enables more people to join. Since 2011, we were like jumping from, from project to project because initially what we wanted is to... Um, is to become the new owner of the electricity grid because actually it was contracted out for 20 years and then there was a new tender put up by the municipality and um, people could apply to become the owner of the grid. We thought we can make it happen as an energy cooperative because all the technical backup, we would just um, look for companies that already have experience with it and um, contract the maintenance out, for instance, but we didn't get accepted. And then the municipality came up with the idea that they wanted um, they wanted to take ownership of the electricity grid, and that's happened now. The Mohawk municipality holds 51%, and 49% was given away to an um, uh, electricity company. And we thought from those 49%, we could maybe get a, a few shares, but they didn't even allow that. Now, those of you who were there yesterday, remember what Jan Willem, the, the Dutch guy who lives in England, said? Investors want security certainty. And this is exactly what you get in Germany when you operate a, um, a power grid. You have a guaranteed revenue of about 6% annually and um, it's a highly competitive market. A lot, of, a lot of capital wants to go in there because it's safe and in these days not much is, is safe and predictable anymore. But we also haven't reached that target. So we moved on. We didn't give up. And we came up with um, the idea of distributing electricity, basically what you guys want to do now, and I think you'll be the first in the UK to do that from a citizen background. We have started that, I think, two years ago, and we had support through a partner company that has experience in the deregulated energy market. Um, just a sentence. This this, this, this partner company is from the very southwest of, the, of our province and we are on the southwest of Germany, so they are close to France and Switzerland. It's the Elektrizitätswerke Schönau. They came up with a petition in Brussels, Belgium now to stop the subvention for Hinkley Pond C a few weeks ago. Now to the planned wind farm project. An amazing project because in 2011, the provincial government changed. Since World War II, we always had conservative leadership in our province, and now it's the Green Party together with the Social Democrats. So all the um, circumstances for building wind farms were changed, and it would be much easier now. So, as you can see, Mohad on the right-hand side, and the next bigger town into the direction of stuttgart Bagnam on the left-hand side on the bottom, there was a wind farm plant with six plants. Each would have 2.4 megawatt. It would be from Nordex, a German manufacturer. And um, 
the costs would be around 3 million pounds per turbine and the estimated time of the building permit was December 2014. We don't even have it now. That's um, just something I could maybe quickly elaborate on. When you're so motivated and you really want to move things forward in an innovative way, then you come up with a project like this. Everything was planned with a technical partner. A lot of money would have been invested. And during the process, all the stakeholders were asked, if you, are, you, are you okay with it? And, and with those stakeholders, there was also the a German authority for aviation security. And they were like, okay, go on ahead with planning and spending money for planning. Now, in, I think, late 2014, before the permit was um, expected, they were like, nope. And um, so this is why we couldn't get the permit yet, and we fall kind of in a hole. This was a visualization of one power plant that could be seen from a village just up the hill from Mohart. It's, it's quite high, it's one of the modern 141 meters, the tower, and then the blades, probably another 60 meters. Um, to draw, to come to a conclusion, I wanted to say it is, it, we were really hit by the unexpected difficulties with state authorities and there is still no clearance when the building permit is to expect, so we, we are very positive and motivated people and thankful for everything, but we, were, we are really disappointed with that particular authority, with that government authority. Um, it is very difficult, it has been very difficult for us in Mohat and is still difficult to establish a profitable energy cooperative because we all do that on a volunteering basis. Nevertheless, there is an engagement, with, there is a motivation in the civil society with the World Climate Summit of Paris in December in the background to move things forward and we have now 200 members in our cooperative and 150 customers who um, we sell electricity to. Yep. And this picture shows us in December in Paris where we've participated um, at the rallies around the World Climate Summit and even met people from the UK. Thanks very much for your attention. Thank you. This, this common theme of the the, the, the huge importance of public policy um, and, but, and yet the power of civil society to actually um, push back is, uh, is a really good theme, thank you. So we're moving on to our, our final um, group of, of talks uh, today um, in terms of, of focusing on sustainable lifestyles. So I'd like to welcome Ellie uh, from Co Wheels to talk about what we're doing in, in Froome. Oh dear. <laughs> I think we've got, a, we've got another talk, sorry, I'm obviously very well briefed here, so uh, 